Hello, I'm Chrissy Seaton and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is a continuation um, of the book we're going through called Amuna and the Noahide. And it is uh, a book I've been using in the last few videos to um, illustrate the pathway and in, in simple terms for non-Jews to understand. And so I'm going to continue on today and this will be pages um, 40, uh, I'm not sure where I'm up to, for, oh yes, up to 40, page 40 to 47. And uh, it's about um, Amuna or idolatry. So <clears throat> we may well uh, look at the title and say, well, idolatry, what is it? Well, we're going to come to that. And um, we have been given a commandment that we are not to participate in any form, shape, whatever of idolatry. And I think that everyone is familiar with that commandment. And it is derived from um, Genesis and uh, in uh, Genesis 2, chapter 2, verse 16. And uh, it says, do not profane God's oneness in any way. And the description says, acknowledge that there is one true God. So only one true God. And do not worship idols or make new religions. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16, that's derived from. So that's the very first Noahide law, rule, commandment. And um, that's what we're going to look at today uh, in relation to also the 13 principles of faith that we've been learning about as well. So what do we learn about the um, spiritual world? Well, uh, we take lessons from the physical world and, and that sort of teaches us about the pros and cons of the spiritual world. So we as humans tend to, we've got to have a human tangible um, something to compare with. Uh, our, our ability to look beyond into the spiritual concept, we often hold that back and don't absorb it and use it as we should. And also, human frailty is that some of us are easily led and some of us aren't. And some people ask questions and had, uh, do excellent critical analysis and others don't. They just kind of believe in, in good faith pardon the pun, that they are being told the truth. And sadly, often they never find out that it's been a lie or a misconception. So let's get on with this. And it says um, that uh, we have, uh, how shall I say? Uh, well, it is, it's a human trait within us that we, we tend to... Uh, be impulsive about things at times and oh it sounds like a good idea oh yes let's do that but we don't actually think the lead up the middle part and the actual outcome and how that affects us as a human being and those around us so it's very important that we make a distinction between one god and idolatry so let's go on and look, even proclaimed atheists, the um, people who say they believe in nothing, it's very difficult to believe in nothing. And they are... Often those people who proclaim to be, you know, died in the wool atheists, they still believe in something. May it be, be it that, that the sun's going to rise in the east tomorrow or eventually it's going to rain, um, or there's, uh, they believe in an unseen thing, uh, but it's tangible in as much that they can equate to it, like nature, uh, things like that. 
and you can get quite bizarre things that people believe in um, but they call themselves an atheist and, and they say they believe in nothing so um, I, I, there's a lovely little example here um, that Rabbi Lazer Brody has written and I'll just read it. It says, suppose that an atheist is a trader in the futures market. He sits in his Wall Street Manhattan office and buys carloads of corn in Iowa. He sees neither the corn nor the railroad, railroad cars transporting it to a central silo outside of Chicago. He therefore does believe in something that he does not see. So that's a lovely example, isn't it? Um, that there's things you can't see, but people believe, you know, whether depending on what your belief is. So let's go on now. It says here that in, uh, in lack of the principle one of the 13 principles of Amuna, the dollar could easily become people's deity, their god. They worship money. And we don't need to discuss that any further. We've all probably known of someone or some organisation that that truly is a deity to them, how much income or their balance and things like that. And so... Uh, and we, we've also in recent times, I think, been exposed to a tremendous amount of woke ideology. It's called woke, W-O-K-E, woke ideology. It's ideology that honestly a sane thinking person with a modicum of intelligence couldn't possibly justify what is being forced upon you, in the, be it, you know, through radio, media, what have you. So we, um, you know, we, we, we'd have to be responsible for discerning things, for sorting things out and thinking for ourselves. We can't just set it aside or say, oh, well, that must be right. So-and-so read that on the news or so -and this news channel said that or what have you. We, we charge with being, with having the ability uh, to use critical analysis, and we should be doing that. God's given us the intelligence to do that. And so with this uh, false ideology in terms of, you know, you're worrying about that, that train load of corn coming, you're worried about the futures market, you're worried about this... When you get into that mindset and lifestyle and thought patterning, it is extremely easy for those same people to slip into the dark side. They then start, um, you know, thinking about something that isn't really in the realm of holy and wholesome thought and actions and so this is where you often see people falling into that dark spirituality where they go um, and uh, maybe uh, as much as violating all of the commandments and that is wrong um, and that can be for several reasons it's it can either simply be they want to amass more money or they have a, a hidden agenda and you know, I talk about ideology and idolatry. You know, it's it's it creeps very slowly in, and so uh, we we need to make sure that we're not under the influence of dark entities or idolatry in any way. So, and it's atheism is that atheism is that extreme lack of a moona. Uh, and where there's no Amuna, there will definitely be idolatry in one form or another, in one physical realm of another. It will creep in. Um, and so that lack of Amuna is, is what is we call spiritual darkness. And particularly from that uh, uh, emanates negativity, uh, self-doubt, um, a lot of negative emotions, uh, particularly depression and anxiety, and uh, 
and it, it's it's like a a dark hood encompassing the soul and that's something we have to to be very careful not to allow to happen so it goes on in this book and says a moona and idolatry are mutually exclusive they can't run in tandem with each other um a myriad of negative emotions, as I've mentioned before, can manifest. Uh, and the first Noahide law prohibits idolatry. is actually a law that obligates us to have faith. So prohibiting us from falling into idolatry requires us to have faith, uncompromising faith in a one and only true God. And here we will work out that this amuna, this faith, is something that we need to be careful about and strengthen each day. And that depends on our loving relationship with God. How we uh, get through our day is totally uh, dependent on Hashem, our loving God. Uh, with, uh, now it goes on and says, without a moon, a person is subject to all types of idolatry some in very subtle forms uh it, it that idolatry will creep in whatever it is and fill that void and th along with it there is this denial of god there's um idolatry then takes the place of god idolatry in one form of another be it a commercial type thing uh, or be it uh, another a new religion something like that so it does take up the void now Hashem I want to I want to make this very clear Hashem is the one the only creator he's always been there always is and always will be now he does not need a helper he doesn't need an executive team or a executive director he doesn't need any of those trappings and so one true God, we worship him only and to worship anything other than Hashem uh, is, is really, uh, it, it's open idolatry. You can't call it something else that it is. It doesn't matter how you gloss it, it won't work. Um, and so it says the creator, blessed be his name, is the creator and director of all the creations and he alone did does and will do every deed so he, he is totally in control furthermore idolatry it goes on and says is a heinous violation of principle number two where we declare with complete belief that the creator blessed be his name is one uh, there is no unity like him under any circumstances and he alone is our God, past, present and future. So you can't make it much plainer than that, can you? It goes on and says that these three above cited principles of a moon totally debunk any concept of a new religion based on anything other than one true God. Now, Hashem alone did, does and will do every deed from the beginning of time to this moment and beyond. He needs no help or assistance. So I think because we have physical properties and the world has physical properties, there's physicality around us everywhere, be it the window pane we're looking through the trees, uh, you know, everything. We tend to think in physicality all the time. So we want to put an image to God. We try to, you know, embody him in some way. And, and we can't because there is no image. It, 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 it's an ethereal, it's, it's, it's a presence that you only need to just pray and you're in connection with. It can't be much easier than that talk to God you'll feel his presence you'll see his presence around you that's 
clearly evident in our surroundings, in our gardens, our animals, all those things. So there's uh, throughout history, the masses had, uh, how shall I say, um, had difficulty holding on to that true, real Amuna. And they needed something tangible. You know, they just, you know, it's like, you know, look, when our family go away or our children leave home and spread their wings, I mean, we, we have a photo of them, don't we? And we just, every time we go past it, we look at it, we give it a little kiss, you know. It doesn't mean um, that they're just... It, that's just a reminder. It's just a physical reminder. But it's we know and understand that that's a photograph of my child. As opposed to when people have faiths where they have icons and paintings and things of whoever they're worshipping. And it certainly isn't worshipping the one and only God. So we have to be very careful about that. And it, idolatry creeps in in very subtle forms. You think what kind of harm can be in that? Uh, but, and it fills a void for people that, that I've got to have something there. It's like the photograph fills the void of your son not or ch daughter not being with you but you know I have the photos and things like that I just flick through every now and then can you see where it's easy for people to fall into that trap um, it's a healthy thing to look at the photos of your children and remember them and you know dust them and all the photo frames when they're not with you but we know that they're not God, don't we? Oh, some of us might <laughs> think differently. But, you know, it's, it, it, in reality, we know that is actually a photo of our child. But when we see people bowing to icons and other physical things in, 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 in uh, reverence to a, a being, in reverence to um, a belief they have, then that's totally wrong. That's idolatry. So, again, we remind ourselves, we do not, uh, you know, Hashem does not need any helpers. Um, it is a violation, idolatry is a violation of principle number five, which teaches that Hashem is the only entity to whom it is befitting to pray and it is not befitting to pray to anyone or anything else. Now it goes on and says, these three above cited principles of Amuna totally debunk any concept of making new religions or any other God as they see it. As we've said before, Hashem doesn't need any help. So this need for physical property, physical image is something we just have to put out of our mind. It's, it, it, it's not the f image, it's the essence of who God is. It's the essence, the spirituality, the, the uh, unexplainable, miraculous presence that he has in our lives and we have access to. So we have to believe in God, the only one. Uh, but once you start adding some other dimensions and flesh and blood, the next thing you have a saviour or you have a relative or you have a trinity developing, then these are idolatrous concepts and you can't accept those. They're not acceptable to Hashem. They're just not. So it doesn't matter how you try to normalise that or mod moderate that thought or that idea. It's not, it's, it's, it's a terrible insult to Hashem. Um, and he, he, so we've got to believe with complete faith that his, uh, he, his name is not a body, nor is it a physical entity that we can touch feel or see. He is absolutely what they say is incorporeal, 
with no image whatsoever. No image whatsoever. It goes on and says that there is no partnership. Hashem needs no help, nor has he any physical attributes or partnerships. A con and now a partnership is a concept known as shituf. In Hebrew, um, in other words, they believe in God, but give him partners like a flesh and blood son or some other entity with divine attributes. It goes on and says, these are clearly idolatrous concepts uh, and, and there's reference to this in a book called The Divine Code, which you've all heard me talk about. It goes into great detail there about it. So therefore it comes here uh, in The Divine Code, Rabbi Moshe Weiner talks about Christianity based on the concept of a partnership and how that violates the Noahide law that prohibits idolatry. Its ceremonial rituals are forbidden bowing down to its symbols such as statues or a cross is also forbidden and i'm not going to uh, soften that up in any way that's that's what it says no new religion so we can't go off and make a, a manufacture what we think god might want us to do or or how we'd like it, our faith and belief to be um, Rabbi Weiner also writes in the Divine Code, anyone who creates a new religion denies the command of God to all nations to keep the seven Noahide commandments and, transgre uh, and transgresses the essential commandment of them all. So in other words, it, there's no argument here to be had. There's no discussion. You... You must believe in that there is no necessity whatsoever to improve, manufacture, tweak the system of who the divine is. Absolutely not. Uh, even if a new religion such as Islam, which is only 1,400 years old, or Christianity, which is less than 2,000 years old, um, includes observing the Noahide commandments, and so, they do. I'm not saying that they haven't included some of the commandments, the Noahide commandments, uh, but they are not being observed because they were commanded by God and revealed through Moses, but they're, com they're following them because they think, well, um, it, it, it enhances our new religion and it makes common sense. They're not keeping the laws because God has commanded them they think well they make sense so we'll do that but they're in the guise of another package you know we've repackaged it uh, it is therefore forbidden to preserve any newly created religion so in other words what's this saying here there is no there is judaism and there is being a gentile gentiles are noahides b'nai noah children of Noah uh, and Jews of course that don't need any introduction we all understand so all these varying religions that you will see out there regardless of what their idyllic belief is or what they base that foundation of belief upon it they're being misled and it is a form of idolatry and so just to sum this up, I, 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 I'm not very good at fancying and prettying things up. I, I think sometimes we just have to say things as it is. And some of you would all know that just lately we've seen an absolute plethora of stuff in the airways, the TVs everywhere on all manner of things from children wanting to change from one sex to another um of um you know there's even ridiculous people wanting to marry their horse and oh look uh, you know it beggars belief what extreme wokeness people have what they will perceive as their right and that 
if we don't uh, embrace that, then there's something wrong with us, that they're, they're okay. It, it's us that don't want to do what they want to do that uh, are odd. And so the only way I can describe this is that this ideology that we sort of see creeping in over the air every time you turn the TV on, you see something and you think, oh, forbid this, you know, how crazy can it get? I didn't think things could get any worse. Well, ideology and idolatry, so ideology and idolatry is both deceptive in its sneaking, creeping, slow-moving vomit. That's what it is. Wokeism is another form of self-worship or self-gratification. It's a form of creating myself as the, as the one that must have all attention, the one that must have my rules obeyed, my needs attended to. And ideology is, you know, you map them together and yes, you've got slow, creeping, stinking vomit. That's what it is. And I can't think of any other way to describe it. I've gone a little bit over my time today talking to you, but I really felt that this was something I could not bypass. And I felt that uh, it doesn't do to pretty these things up. There is one faith, one religion, one God. Uh, don't try to improve upon it, divide it, multiply it or whatever because all you're doing is just following an idolatrous path and that never ends well. In the meantime, thank you for watching my channel and subscribing and God bless.